The MMA schedule for 2021 hasn't quite reached the halfway mark, but the competition for knockout of the year is already heating up, with crazy and violent finishes happening practically every week. Not only are these highlight reel finishes happening, but they're happening in the highest profile fights of the year, which means there will be a lot of discussion over who has the best striking related finish of the year. In today's video, we're going to take a look at some of the best UFC knockouts of 2021. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the the channel with notifications on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. Mike Davis defeats Mason Jones by unanimous decision in UFC Fight Island 8. While the first fight on this list confirmed a number of things, Holloway's skill and gamesmanship, Qatar's toughness and talent, featherweight being generally awesome, this one was an introduction to a pair of all-action competitors who should be watched every time they stepped in the octagon from now on. Davis, a standout on the Florida regional scene, who was favored to defeat Sadiq Yusuf in their contender series bout had only one professional loss in his short UFC debut against Gilbert Burns and he came into this one off an absolute thrashing of Thomas Gifford demonstrating why so many people were so high on his potential heading into that clash with Super Sadiq. Jones meanwhile was making his promotional debut after gaining champ champ status under the Cage Warriors banner and he was returning to lightweight after a championship vacation to welterweight in his previous outing. The Dragon was undefeated and anxious to make a mark on the UFC crowd which he and Davis both did. This was one of those bites where the 29-28 scores across the board were true, but it didn't tell the whole story because for 15 minutes, these two just went at it. No quarter sought, no quarter given. They landed a total of 225 strikes in three rounds, Davis with 117, Jones with 108, making it only one of three times this year when both participants landed 100 or more strikes. And unlike the other three-round bout that met that description, the tempo of this one never slowed. Davis and Jones went for broke right out of the start and didn't let up until the final horn sounded, and maybe that will be remembered when these two dynamos return to action. Corey Sandhagen's Flying Knee Allowing for recency bias, Corey Sandhagen's knockout of Frankie Edgar in the co-main event of UFC Fight Night 184 on February 6th was the best knockout of the year so far. When it comes to subjective appraisals of what's great in a given category, I usually say the same thing. My criteria boil down to a trinity of style points, stakes, and opposition talent. Sandhagen had aces in the style points column, a 28 second flying knee that sliced through Edgar's consciousness like butter through a hot knife. Please don't make me laugh. It was perfectly timed, exactly placed, and left the answer snoozing inside a sparsely populated UFC apex, leaving the few spectators shocked. What's at stake? Sandhagen would have been guaranteed a title fight if Peter Yen hadn't handed his bantamweight crown to Aljamain Sterling after a reckless illegal knee, necessitating an instant rematch. Apart from that, Sandhagen received Receive the next best thing in the form of a main event fight against former champion TJ Dillashaw, who will have all eyes on him after his PED suspension. The ability of opposition hardly needs to be mentioned. We are aware of Edgar's accomplishments, former champion, multi-division title contender, octagon fight time leader, and a shoe-in for the UFC Hall of Fame in the near future. Is Edgar still on the top of his game? No, but he just defeated an established contender in Pedro Munoz and was coming off a title battle with Max Holloway. Sandhagen knockout was collectively the most beautiful, violent, and momentous we've seen this year. So don't let being a prisoner of the moment affect your perception of reality. And if something holds up in the face of it, God help whoever's on the receiving end. Kumaru Usman's right hand. All due respect to the other two contenders on this list, Corey Sandhagen's flying knee KO Frankie Edgar was outstanding. Recency bias also helped Yuri Prochatska get a significant nod. Besides, spinning elbow KOs aren't exactly common. But in the grand scheme of things, Kumaru Usman's 19-1 MMA, 14-0 UFC, and his KO of Jorge Masvidal, 35-15, and 12-8 and and in the UFC, at UFC 261, was the best knockout of the year thus far. The story comes to a close. Usman's completion of Masvidal, if judged on its own merit, might fall barely short against Prochatska. However, when all of the other factors are taken into account, the Usman KO simply rises above the rest of the pack a third of the way through the year. Let's start with the suspense. Usman was squaring off against one of his two worst arch enemies. It's a tremendous statement that he didn't get caught up in the extracurriculars and instead delivered the way he did. Before his duel with Reyes, Rochatska had such an interesting past. Then there's the fact that Usman is 14-0 in the UFC. The pressure of maintaining that undefeated UFC record grows with each outing. As a result, delivering with the kind of right hand he did is next level status. Not to mention the fact that Usman defeated an opponent who had not been knocked out or finished since 2008. Masvidal hadn't been fighting much 
much since then, and he hasn't been fighting chumps. Plus, the stage in which Usman performed was historic, the UFC's first return to packed venues in almost a year, and the third of the three title fights on the bill. He came through with the biggest finish of the night after two spectacular finishes ahead of him. When all the facts are taken into account, Usman's knockout should be the top story for the first four months. Yuri Prochatska's spinning back elbow. Well, 2021 has been full of fantastic knockouts. Thus, the competition for knockout of the year this year will be fierce. However, Yuri Prochatska spinning back elbow on Dominic Reyes and the UFC on ESPN 23 main event is already at the top of my list. It was a tumultuous conclusion to a tumultuous battle. For the opening five minutes, the two light heavyweight contenders battled toe-to-toe, -to -toe, giving viewers a fast-paced bout. Prochatska capped it off with a spinning elbow that seemed to appear out of nowhere. Reyes landed face-first on the canvas after the elbow connected flush. It was one of the most brutal MMA fights ever. Prochatska's knockout was so impressive that even after only two wins in the UFC, fans, media, and the UFC broadcast team were already predicting him as the next 205-pound title contender. The finish by Prochatska will live on in the UFC highlight reel for a long time. Pedro Munoz defeats Jimmy Rivera by unanimous decision at UFC Vegas 20. The next fight on this list was pushed back a few weeks, yet it still managed to exceed expectations, which should tell you all you need to know about this bantamweight match. Rivera won the first fight by split decision a few years ago, and the two have remained fixtures in the stacked 135-pound class weight ever since, consistently placing in the 5-10 to 10 area while facing nothing but tough competition. It was more of the same when Munoz and Rivera stationed opposite each other for the second time. And just like the first time, they brought it on fight night. This was one of those fights that truly reinforced the fact that most of us aren't made out to be professional fighters, because if I'd taken two of Munoz's endless low kicks during the fight, I would have laid down on the mat, tapped due to imminent strikes, and resigned right there. Rivera calmly hung in there, altering stances at times, firing off his own offensive the entire time, and forcing Munoz to work hard to even the series at one apiece. Kai Kara France defeats Rogerio Bontorin by KO at UFC 259. Great fights don't have to be long, and they don't have to involve a lot of blows, as this battle demonstrates. Nicheku's teammate Ulberg was knocked out in a couple of bouts after Nicheku dumped him on the canvas. Kara France came out ready to avenge the city kickboxing team, but things didn't look well for the former Ultimate Fighter contestant right away. Bontorin knocked him out, snatched his back, and slashed his throat. Kara France managed to wriggle free and back to his feet despite being full back mount, body triangle lock, forearm under the chin, and getting ready to go night-night. Bontorin dominated for more than four and a half minutes, but Kara France proved why he is known as Don't Blink in the final 30 seconds of the first round. Unloading and connecting with right-hand missiles to the dome, the last of which folded the Brazilian over the waist before collapsing to the canvas. As Bontorin struggled to stand and lurched forwards, Kara France walked it off like Mark Hunt, bringing the stunning comeback victory to a dramatic close. And there you have it, some of the best fights and knockout moments in the UFC this year. The best news is, the year isn't even halfway through. We have yet to see some amazing fights and knockouts. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss any of our new and upcoming content. Thanks for watching.